Hello, everybody. And nobody. I am trying a brand new live method. This is a vertical live that should show up on somebody's YouTube short shelf feed. And I thought it would be really interesting to give it a shot. So this is what we're doing. I am going to try to grab the URL for this and share it out so that people can have a look at what this all means. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. <clears throat> what I wanted to do was follow up on the stream that we did on Wednesday and the discussions that we had and some of the reactions that I've seen coming out in the last couple of days about what is going on. So I thought that would be an interesting sort of topic. And it's Friday. Or if you're in New Zealand and Australia, it's Saturday. Probably Thailand, it's also Saturday. And other parts of Asia, it's probably Saturday and very early. So, but it's the weekend, right? So it's a good time to chat and to sit around. So I'm going to have a look and see how we're doing with all of this. Yep, there it is. It's live, and I have no idea if this is on the short shelf or not for people, but here you go. I'm I'm gonna give this a shot. I'm gonna give this a shot, and if nobody shows up, well, so be it. It's just like old school. It's just like when I first started out and I thought, oh my God, nobody is ever gonna show up for anything that happens. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put this in the Discord and see if anybody's around, first of all. And, oh, I have one like, so somebody is here. Hi! Hi, Thumb! Good to see you. If you are out there and you want to gather a few more people for the chat, then please do bring them along. I want just wanted to see how this vertical format of YouTube Shorts sort of holds up, because it is very... It's different. It's different. I'm going to use the at everyone in, whoops, in Discord. And we'll see if, oh, Scott, of course you're here. I know. I, but that's because I wasn't aware of the session either. Let's see. How does that, how does that look? The comment, it looks really small. Is it really small for you? I have not tried to do a live stream in vertical format before, so I have no idea what's happening here. Um, okay, I need to bring your comment up again so I can change it. <laughs> but right now you have, you have a monopoly on my attention, so that's got to be worth something, right? Is it worth something? I have no idea. Oh, they've moved some things around in Ecom, and now I don't know where to find the actual... how to make this bigger. I can move it. I can edit the text. When you're full screen, it's fine. And you're on your phone so you can type. Okay, but can you see the comments when you're... I think I need to make the comments bigger. In terms of font size. Because... I can't read that on the screen at all. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Edit text. Ah, there it is. Text color, height, uh, width, style. Okay. I mean, we're just playing, right? It's Saturday. What are you doing today? Let's see how that is. Dawn's here. Of course you're here, Dawn. Shouldn't you be out partying or something like that? So Dawn, it's my first um, vertical. So this is a new format that YouTube is experimenting with and not everybody has access to this. I don't think I do because I don't watch enough shorts on YouTube for them to want to spend the energy on me, but they, uh, they're they rolling out this ability to go live in vertical format and it'll go on the shorts feed. So if somebody's flicking through their shorts and they see this, a, they'll flick away, but B, 
if they're interested in field hockey umpiring, you never know. I might be able to discover some more people and I just thought it'd be fun to experiment with it. So, uh, because there's been a couple things that I've seen on social media and I thought it was really, it'd be really cool to talk about. How can I, I need to make this like really big save. Okay, that's better. Is that getting readable yet? I still don't think it's readable. I need bigger. 64. Let's go to 64. And try that. Better? Let me know. You must be watching on your mobile. That has to be the thing. And how is the sound balance? I think it might be a little intense. I need your feedback. Hi. You came across it on your main YouTube feed. Okay, well, um, I'm not here in judgment. So one of the fun things about my creator life is that I occasionally get to schmooze a little bit with people that, that do stuff. And I was in a live stream earlier watching my friend Lori Pertucci of the live stream pros and give a presentation on this feature. And the YouTube creator liaison, uh, Renee Ritchie, who um, I'd like to say is my friend, but I think I can optimistically say he's an acquaintance who knows my name. Uh, he is the official person at YouTube who serves the purpose of connecting people like me and other people who are a lot more important to YouTube proper. So they, um, so his function is to help translate and give advice and, and listen to creators concerns and take them back to YouTube and YouTube's concerns and take them back to creators and all that sort of stuff. So he was there too. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to try this. And so any feedback I get, I'm going to DM him on Twitter X and see what happens. Okay, that's bigger and better. You can read it even when your keyboard's open. Oh, good. And the sounds great for you. Okay, well, cool. Cool. Oh, and the live announcement just went out on the YouTubes. So uh, on the Discord, I mean, so. <laughs> this feels really weird. So one day I'm gonna do a behind the scenes where I record myself prepping for a What Up Wednesday because apparently it's a really good idea to show people all the work that you do to go into getting ready for something like that. And it really is a ton of prep. And to just kind of open up live, I set up three scenes, set it to vertical mode, <laughs> press the live button. There's no thumbnail. There's no nothing. There's no description really to speak of. No script, no outline. I don't know what the hell I'm going to talk about other than gossiping with you guys about the PC Rules trials and anything else you want to talk about, really, about umpiring. Uh, it's kind of terrifying. Kind of terrifying. Okay. And it does... Yeah. Hi. It's a Friday. And as I've been telling everybody else, Kat, I'm just experimenting with this new feature. And I thought a follow-up to what happened on Wednesday would be, like, the perfect sort of subject matter fodder for that because I didn't want to make it a big deal. I just wanted to see how it worked and whether some new people <laughs> show up. It's a what a Friday. You know, it's <laughs> it's some weird like why did I come up with what up Wednesday? It's it's not really that I'll show you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> if you think that you're really going to get... Scott, if you want me at my unfiltered mostness, then you need to show up for yellow members' activities because that's when they really get me. Right, Cat Dawn? It's way more sweary. Way more straight forward. If you think that I shoot hard sometimes in the live streams when people say things that I'm not very impressed with, you should hear me on private. Yeah, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I'm taking hormone replacement therapy. I'm hoping it's gonna make me less angry. Has it really happened yet? Not quite. Okay, so 
now that we've had a couple days to think about things and the FIH today came out with a statement. Now let's see if I can pull this up properly on all of this. Let's see, do, 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 do here. I'm going to try doing this. Hi, new scene. Look at that. <laughs> oh, Shrikanth, hello. I Have you commented before? Oh, that doesn't look good. Hang on. Hang on. If I do. No, no, I don't want to do that either because that's not going to show you anything. Shrikanth, look, I mean, with your fine comment, let me give it the, the props that it deserves. You have a beer. Wow. So you want some umpiring knowledge? Well, I'll try to help. I'm not sure. It is Friday, so I'm not saying, and I probably actually should have opened a rosé to get me here, but this was very spontaneous, and it's only 12.30 here, so it's kind of just lunch hour. So I'm still sip sipping mate and all that kind of stuff. So, Shrikanth, I don't know if you were there on Wednesday or if you've had a chance to catch the replay of the PC Rules trial discussion that went on for an hour. You know me. I just sort of touched on a few things, breezed through it really quickly, super concise. And if you weren't there, um, you know, you might want to go back and watch it on like two times speed, jump through it a little bit and get some more of the background. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. Oh, you commented a long, long time ago. Gotcha. Gotcha. But I wanted to come back today and talk about a few things that have sprung up. And if you guys have anything that you've seen out on social media that you'd like to bring to my attention, I can pull it up. I can pull it up on my on my phone and then and then watch. And then I can do I can do this. No, I can do this. And I can show it here. And hopefully all of my alerts are turned off. And we can talk about it together because what's more fun than not being in people's comments, but to talk about them live on YouTube? Uh, why not? Uh, you did see the replay. Oh, great. And you agree with me. Okay, so we're best friends. What a pleasure. Thank you. So, yeah, um, John Wyatt came out. Uh, I, I mean, well, maybe he didn't type this exactly, but this is this is all John White's uh, doing. He's the director of sport for the FIH and kind of does all the things, all the things. And they decided to put out, publicly release the documents that I had been sent and that had been sent to the national associations and the continental federations, but had not necessarily been leaked in full format to everybody else. Because what happened was this. So what happened is a screenshot of this first page got sent out, which was just like the simple description, as you can see, simple description, the setup, the rationale, the considerations to test for, but the actual wording of the rule wasn't included in pages three and pages four. So you can now go and grab this yourself and if I'm fancy let's see if I can put this in the comments for you I mean obviously look at me I'm so fancy and I think this is important not because necessarily everybody's going to read it but the transparency behind every process that an or sports organization or any organization takes these days, I think is paramount for legitimacy and even just for CYA purposes. And if you don't know what that acronym means, it's cover your ass. And if you put out the full information that the private organizations get out to the public, there's no holes. There's no places where people say, well, we didn't know. We didn't, you know, it's like, well, you didn't read it. And because you're here, you're obviously keenly interested in getting the info. So now you can see if you read through um, this part, the update and review update, as you see the timeline and this sort of thing, this is what I received on Tuesday. 
and or Monday and allowed me to say all the things that I did about preparing for what up Wednesday. So the numbers, the as you can see here, the 4,700 people around the world who responded and the the statistically um, the distribution of the responses and all that kind of stuff and what they decided that they were going to do with it and how they want to make sure that the experiment is conducted properly when it's ex and it's an, it's an experiment and that's kind of one of the interesting things I thought about um, this morning when I was waking up because I have my best thoughts when I'm waking up is that I think a lot of people. It, it now makes sense to me that a lot of people are struggling as to whether this rule applies to them. So obviously there was a big like, oh my God, this is happening and we're so mad. And it's like, no, it's not happening. <laughs> it's literally, it's the most experimental of experiments. It just hasn't been imposed on anybody. So it's actually the most mild form of experiment. So instead of saying, for example, the way that the EHL did and said, we're gonna do this, for one season and we're going to see what happens and everybody has to play it and boom and the clubs didn't really have much of a choice about it but they certainly voiced their opinion afterwards when they said two points for a field goal is dumb and we don't like this whole you know blah 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 this is literally a voluntary participation event so if you as a national association thinks it's dumb, thinks it's inappropriate, doesn't, you don't want to disrupt anybody, you, you, you don't think it's safe, which I think I talked a lot about on Wednesday, but if you don't want to do this, you see this information, you say, thank you very much, FIH, we look forward to seeing the results that come from other people implementing it because we're not going to. And that is what England Hockey has explicitly come out and said, England Hockey is not going to do this. And the experiment period is from now until may 2024 which is incidentally uh just before paris so nobody in england is going to be gathering data on this unless they do it on the sly which they shouldn't do because you should always apply to your national association for any variances on the rules of hockey that's what the rules of hockey read in the actual book which is something we can you know we can look through if you want so I, I have to say, I'm very, I feel very positive about the fact that the FIH actually came out with this and kudos. I don't often give them props, but I'm giving them props for this. But what was really fun was starting to go through the comments. <laughs> so, um, you know, here's Ernst. If you didn't know, this is Ernst. Studio Hockey or uh, the hockey site or he's got he's got a number of social medias but what he's asking for is to make sure that it's evidence-based and also like why didn't you analyze your own international games and it's because they're not analyzed and they don't we all know that the FH does not have the person power to fuel a full retrospective if they wanted to know how many green cards were given or missed in the pro league this season in my opinion i could give them those stats because i've been tracking that but they if it, to go back through hundreds thousands of matches and get that information they just don't have the people to do it unfortunately so Let's see, I'm gonna, Scott, I'm gonna put your comment up and then I'm gonna edit it because I wanna make sure that we can actually read it. Color, black, opacity. There we go. <laughs> you won't be implementing it. First from a fellow umpire mentioning it in a casual Facebook post before you mentioned on EH and not doing it on What Up Wednesday. Well, I mean, honestly, I don't, want to sound like an asshole about it but it's not up to us as individuals it's it's for a national association to take it to some kind of competition jurisdiction league where they feel they have the right resources and can give a the full statistical picture 
over the course of a season back to the FIH. And that jurisdiction competition league would very likely, depending on the National Association, be able to feedback and say, okay, yeah, we're willing to do this, or to say, hell no, we're not doing this. We don't want to do it. So, but it's it's not something that we walk up to a game and go, hey, let's try it, because that's not the point. The point is not having an anecdotal experience about it. The point is about gathering statistics. And I think the documentation that the FIH has forwarded is very clear on that. So we need to be very clear on that as well. If you go to the review, <laughs> I think I have to turn this sideways so I can actually see that's not going to help you guys. Okay. So in this section here, this section here, please provide the details. This is way too small for me to read, by the way. Please provide the details of the leagues or competitions that you're proposing within your country. You have to propose it. You don't even just like say, yeah, we're doing it. You're proposing to participate in the rule trial. Both leagues or competitions that are being compared should be of the same gender, age group, and level. And then you get all those stats. When we hear back from you, we will confirm to you all individually and provide details of the trial, including the simple data collection tool that we use to collect the data. So it's not like just a willy nilly, like, hey, you know, go out and do it in a game. Absolutely not. Okay. And this is. This is why I'm talking about it so much and trying to allay everybody's fears and tell them not to panic and not to stress because it, it isn't anything that we need to stress about at all because most of us are not going to be doing it. Now, let me go back to the tweet and the stuff. <laughs> uh, and it's unfair to India. Jeez. Did I not allude to this on Wednesday when I think Raj said, oh, is this happening at the Champions Trophy? And I'm like, can you imagine how Harman Preet would react to this? <laughs> it's like prescient. I am prescient. It's like completely there. But it doesn't just affect Harman Preet or it doesn't affect just India. It affects Belgium because of Hendrix and... Uh, and Charlie and, you know, like all the, they have like seven drag flickers. Do you think it doesn't affect them? Do you think it doesn't affect this person? Gonzalo Payat directly affects them. But this is, this is really funny, you guys. So he trots out some stats that, I mean, who knows? Might be accurate, might be completely inaccurate. We have no idea. And the implication of what he's saying is that 4,700 people um, who aren't, most of them aren't playing a coaching in the elite, that somehow that invalidates the opinions or at least the, the, the alarm bells to the FIH, that there is something to at least look at to pursue. I think it's really freaking hilarious. Because the whole point of elite is that most people aren't doing it. Like, you can't have a majority of people participating in any kind of sport and for them to be elite. And if you do, and the only people you are, or if, if you're in the situation where you're listening only to the opinions of elite people and ignoring the vast majority who are not elite, you're doing it wrong. You are absolutely doing it wrong. Because guess what? The sport isn't about the elite. The elite is a showcase. It's your professional venue, but it is not the entire sport. So let's get over ourselves a little bit here, friends. Is what I'm saying. I I just thought that was that was really, really funny. He does have 29 likes though. So maybe he knows what he's talking about. No, that's not how it works. I'm not going to talk about that guy's comments because whatever. And then you've got a complaint about the blue, blue ground. How many players were consulted for this? X players, current players. Well, I mean, the stats there, but whatever. 
Uh, Ginger Paul thinks it's a terrible idea. And again, gets to the red herring that I think, whoop, hi, Barb. <laughs> Barb, you made it on my show. <laughs> the assumption, the, the absolutely ungrounded assumption that this is gonna be more dangerous, that somehow a no holds bar overload and shoot however you please scenario sometimes how makes it more dangerous. It's just absolutely incorrect. It's just, it isn't borne out by actual reality. So I was really interested to get into a conversation with um, coaches in the last FH Academy co coaching course that I was in. And they were describing how one of the biggest problems with team training these days is that we overtrain overload situations that n almost never happen in a game. That attacking is actually about maximizing your opportunities in an underload situation. That teams are much more often to be four on six rather than being seven on four or whatever. We actually have very little data, very little experience, very little anecdotal understanding of what it's like to attack in a free play style, which is what this rules trial gives us. And what that actually does. But what we do know from what we saw from the EHL, from seeing the comparison to the Super Series Hockey Nines alternative that I showed on the stream on Wednesday is that the less people who are involved in the circle, the better. So an overload at least means that it's not 77. It's at least only a 75 or an 85. So that means that you have fewer players in the circle. That's a good thing compared to an 8v8, which if you've ever watched hockey, <laughs> you see all the time. They pack the D because it clogs the spaces. It makes it harder to find options. It, it makes it harder to take shots that aren't dangerous. And players don't just willy-nilly chip the ball at the goal. They don't. Because even at lower levels, people sometimes use their brain power. And I think I, I, I get really wound up about people that don't respect the intellect that players will display. And I'm not saying everybody's smart. I'm not saying they won't do stupid things at times, but we assume the worst of our own community without really having a grounds to do that. So not a huge fan. That said, I think it would be even safer if we took a few more players out of that equation which is why I'm so high. I mean, I'm talking myself into it day after day, how I'm so high on the Hockey Nines alternative. And a couple interesting points about that, that we showed. Now let's see, I'll I'm just on the fly. How about I do this? And I'm gonna open up that video. because I can. Okay, where did it go? Oh, it's actually there. Oh, well, that's not very helpful because I can't grab it. Uh-oh. It's showing on my locked. Okay, this will work somewhat. It's literally playing on my laptop, which has the closed lid right now. Magic. So a couple things that were pointed out to me, somebody in my YouTube comments, and I wanna say their name because I really appreciate them pointing it out to me. I remembered it, like I remember hearing it at the time. And when you watch the video, it's very apparent that the goals are bigger. 
the goals are much bigger. Let's see, can I make this bigger as well? No. Can't touch it. Charles Graham, 3847. Charles Graham, 3847, thank you very much for reminding me that the goals were made bigger. And you can see that like, there's a spacer that's put into the goal right there. And that would have a lot to do with conversion rates and danger as well. So that's a really valid point that I missed in the Wednesday presentation. So take that on board. So it would be interesting to see if you have the same sort of space involved and the same rates or similar or the kind of rates that you want to see without the expansion of the goals because I am not in favor of putting a higher onus, expense, effort on, um, on jurisdictions to modify their equipment for for especially an experiment, but for any reason at all, because we, we can barely, we can barely keep up as it is, right? There's not a lot of money involved. We're, we're really, really suffering with all that kind of stuff. So any solution we can use that doesn't require pitch markings that a lot of fields don't have, that doesn't require new goals or expensive modifications to goals or troublesome modifications to goals and eliminates the number of rules that umpires have to call. I am all about that life, all about that life. So Sir Kanth, what do you have for me? You still think giving field goals two points and PCs one point makes sense. It ensures specialists can continue doing their bit, but the team can decide whether they want to play a PC or convert to field goal. I mean, intellectually it makes sense, but I think the experience that they saw at EHL is that converting a seven or eight V5 with the ball leaving the five meter dash, the conversion rates were extremely low. So they were still scoring lots of penalty corner 0.1 goals. The, the, the PG ones were all through that list. I went through every single match sheet from EHL 2017-2018 and they were still opting for that more often because bird in the hand. They're like, yeah, we'd rather try to get two penalty corner opportunities with a 25% conversion rate than to waste one of those to try to use one of those to gain two points and have a 5% conversion rate because we don't really know what we're doing and it's not a great overload situation because we actually don't get this experience in matches in real life. Because again, they train it, but it doesn't actually happen in real life. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, the open play PCs look a lot easier to teach. Yeah, well, yeah, they're simpler for us. They're simpler for the players. They're simpler for the coaches. It's simpler for the fans to understand. All you have to do is, oh, did the ball leave the 23? Yeah, it probably will because it's a big distance and it's not super advantageous to get it like right close to the 23. You're not gonna, you're not gonna take the risk of it not leaving in order to gain an advantage that you're not actually gonna gain much advantage for, right? So, uh, Shakana. Imagine a team leading by a goal and the other team gets a last minute PC, converts it into a field goal and wins. Uh, yeah, I mean, academically, strategy is sensational and otherwise it could be a draw, but a draw is a lot better. Like, I don't know, I'm a coach. I coach teams and I know what I my call would be. I wouldn't go for the win. I would absolutely go for the draw and then go for the extra time shootout or whatever system that the competition has in place. We're not talking about NCAA today. Uh, Scott, the PC would be over if the ball traveled out of the five meter zone for a second time. What distance stops the PC rolls for the first time, e.g. leaving the 23 meter? Well, that's kind of the whole point is that with the hockey nines example, it's just, there, there are no PC rules. 
other than because all the PC rules involve what what height the first shot can be taken at if it's a hit and drag flick special rules and such like that that causes so many problems they just don't exist it's just the initiation of a free play to overload situation it's nice it's easy so um and and then so what you would need to look at is you would still need to have rules in place for how time ends what would be really interesting and i wonder if this this probably didn't happen during the super series because you know you're using international teams and all this stuff what could be interesting is if the ball is injected leaves the 23 and then player comes dribbling in and perhaps they mishandle the ball and the timing isn't right and they get pressure and so they need to make a couple of maneuvers in order to open into space or one of their two-on-one teammates falls down and they can't give them the pass and so they're dribbling in that no person zone between the circle and the 23. when does the penalty corner end does the ball do they get free reign to do whatever they want until the ball gets enters the the circle for the first time or for the second time because the injection will cross through the circle the first time so once it enters the circle that for a second time and then leaves for a second time is that when and leaves more than five meters is that when it expires like that that would actually have to be elaborated on and i bet they didn't do that in the rules when they were experimenting because at that level they don't they don't f up that much but i can sure imagine my team doing that <laughs> i can sure imagine me doing that my injections actually are dope but sometimes they don't get trapped properly so hi mike yeah the more you think about this the more you like the idea of a five with i'm so convincing aren't i like john wyatt just come talk to me okay i know we're not friends but can we just for professional interests for the good of the game can we just put 2019 aside and just be friends now enough to talk about this stuff um, what did you say? So you, you like the overload play and it really promotes open field skills and space, low danger. Yeah, it does. And I know that Gonzo doesn't like it, <laughs> but he wouldn't like it. And all the purists who love the PC really would not like this idea at all. Rick Charlesworth, uh, I understand is the person to be uh credited with coming up with this this was his child i think the information that i got through was that in 2019 um it was 2019 in australia that they started it and then the super series i think was 2013 did i say 20 so 2011 in australia and then they did this and i think it was 2013 but regardless this is this is Charles Worth. And I mean, some of the stuff he says about umpires and how umpires should be interpreting rules. Um, I think he doesn't get it in terms of what it's like to be on that side of the whistle and what we're trying to help with and what the challenges are. But it doesn't mean that all of his ideas aren't, you know, that, that he wouldn't have any fantastic ideas. And I think this is a fantastic idea. And I'm really kind of surprised that it died the way that it did without any follow-up fanfare protestations. Like, I'm I'm going to actually go back to some of the Canadian players that I know because that, they're closer to my generation in the who were on the team um, who played in that Super Nines, Super Series, Hockey Nines, and asked them what they thought about it. And how much they liked it or hated it or anything like that. See what they thought because that's valid. But there you go. Um, let's see. In a semifinal. Yeah. Shakanth. Doesn't matter what. If the game matters, I am less likely going to be sacrificing. I'm, I'm going to be less likely to take the risk of 
looking for a free play conversion of a seven on five than a penalty corner conversion that would give me one point. No freaking question about it. And I think what we saw at the AHL is the teams, like that that great goal in the Blumendahl Campong game came when Blumendahl was already up. They were already up four nothing, I think. So I'm gonna go back to my stream and you don't have to do that. I can pull out the video myself. Hang on. Let's see. Can you guys see that? What's the score? It was two nothing. I think you guys tell me I it's too small. <laughs> He's middled that. It's two nothing in the third. Yeah, it's risky. But most teams don't have Chevy Leonard and Jamie Dwyer playing. <laughs> Just saying. I wasn't sure if the silencing was going to take out my cough. Um, let's see. Mike. Um, PC time ends with a goal, penalty stroke, field, ball leaving the 23 for a second time. Or the ball played out over the 23 at any time by a defender. There would also be, okay, yeah, free hit defense. What about, since you have such a bigger zone, and the players are rejoining from the center line. All the attackers and defenders who had to run back. What about free hits given to the attack? That would also have to be included. Shrikanth in the IPL 2017. Mumbai was losing 2-1. Wins PC last minute. They convert to a field goal. Kemperman scores a glorious tomahawk, the most memorable hockey moment. Hey, look, I'm not, <laughs> I can't, I know. I'm just saying that it's risky. It's risky. Okay. And again, if I had Kemperman on my team, I'd go for a, he's Mr. Tomahawk. Of course you would give him the ball and tell him to go tomahawk it. Of course you would. I get it. I get what you're saying. Uh, Mike, for juniors and lower levels, potential issue getting the ball to 23 quick enough for it to be a genuine advantage to attack possibly. Yeah, that could be, that That would be why we'd have to see whether it works. And also on slower, like grass pitches, you know, can the ball get there fast enough, that kind of thing. But at junior levels, is that, compensated for by the relative lack of pace relatively speaking of those players running from the central line I don't know that's why it would have to be an experiment and that's why you'd have to see it at other levels other than just international so Scott you suppose they'd still have the sidelines which could be closer sorry I'm trying to remember what this would be in reply to tell me okay <laughs> i do a pretty good job at calling back in my own feed but sometimes the comments lose me yep or the ball played over the side on the defender even if the ball didn't ever leave the 23 yeah well the ball played out by any player definitely too yeah um yeah a free a free hit attack would would be a thing and you would be very I've always said this as a uh, when I coach umpires about penalty corner decisions at the end of the game. So if you're playing that extra time PC and the ball is in that very scary space between the top of the circle and the five meter dotted line, free hits awarded to the attack. So if there is a foul that occurs, 
a foul by the defender that is unintentional that occurs between the top of the circle and the five meter dotted line, you would be awarding a free hit attack and that ends, that ends the corner. And I've always said, be highly suspicious of those fouls because the difference between ending the game and another PC being awarded is a massive benefit. So what are the players likely going to be doing? What is the, the risk reward proposition there? Keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that there aren't accidental fouls, that there aren't unintentional fouls. But are there? Are there? Could be taken as a retake. But any deliberate breakdown outside the D in 23. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're on the same, but yeah, retake is like, well, you're, you're giving the unintentional foul the same weight as the intentional. So it's kind of interesting. What, what have you guys seen out there in the socials in the last few days that has caused you some, some peak, some consternation, some, some doubts, some sheer fury. I'd like to hear it because that would be, yeah, it would be interesting to hear. Um, I've had a few responses again, if I go back to my feed and open this back up. So let me change my scene. Let's see what happens. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this was a thread that was um, that was hopping a little bit, and again, not um, it, again. It's not a rule. It's not a rule. It's not a rule. We're not changing it. And Jade, Jade. I'm going to message you because this, we have to be careful about how we speak about these things. Because as soon as you say, why are we changing rules? Everybody's like, we're changing rules? Oh my God, panic. Members of the media, please be responsible. Use your powers for good, not for evil. Okay. Um, demos, demos, it's not going to help costs more to defense and attack both and very nice for T Chala to uh, post a link to my live stream so people could see an example and then I chimed in on all that kind of stuff but that was really um, I really appreciate the the repost and then there was a response then don't call it a PC advantage no need of a rusher I, I don't know what Kai Rega is but um, maybe somebody else can. Okay, Tristan, chill. Chill. That's a lot of highs. I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. I will put up one of your highs. And now you can, you can chill. Do I need to put slow mode on my comments? It is chaos in the socials. Very much so. Um... Yeah, and I, I mean, we have to, we have to give them credit where credit is due. We can't just keep nailing on them when, the, sure, things haven't been done well in the past, but if they're going to do something now, and I really don't think this is something they can bury their heads in the sand about and just do nothing about, they can't just pretend it's not there. Because as I've said before, I think there is a real potential legal issue if they fail to examine the problem and something terrible does happen as I said on Wednesday imagine an insurer of this sport of that national body the provincial body like what, whatever your jurisdictions wherever you're getting your, your insurance from looks at what happened and goes, man, that looks dangerous. Is that actually in the rules? And then they look at the rules and they go, oh my God, it is in the rules. We are, we are going to deny coverage and let the association sue us for coverage. 
And then they will third party in the FIH as the body responsible for the rules as they're written and say, all right, let's fight. Do you think that that's anything that the FIH would want? <laughs> Do you think anybody wants that? It would cost so much money. So it's responsible for them to at least have the conversation, to look at it, to gather the data, to find out if there's something that they need to do differently because they just can't afford not to. And as a trained, currently and long time not practicing lawyer, that is my layperson's opinion as to what could potentially be an issue that Maybe they got legal advice to that effect that, hey guys, I think you really need to look at this because this could be problematic. So there you go. Oh, be right back. <laughs> I was like, I don't know who Center Stage Wedding and Function Band is, but I bet they're a friend. And then there you go. Hi. Yeah, that's chill. That's well played, sir. Well played. Are you playing a gig tonight, Steven? I guess is what I'm wondering. I wonder if Tristan actually stuck around or if he's gone. Did you subscribe, Tristan? So Mike, Steven, um, that's probably it who's commented that came in late. This is an experiment with a new feature. This apparently will show up in people's shorts feed. Uh, not everybody's, not every YouTube subscriber will have access to this feature, but you might, you might be scrolling through your YouTube shorts and suddenly you see these glasses and you go, what is up with that lady and her weird accent and the way that she's talking at the screen about field hockey rules? Question mark? I thought I'd give it a try. See what's out there. Um, at first, you, when you heard about it, the survey, you were frustrated because of the anecdotal approach. <sighs> if the PC is deemed dangerous or more dangerous, uh, or not dangerous by the new proposal, you would understand a change. Yeah. And I mean, what do you do? Do you wait another five years and actually do gather the data? Because you don't, it, it'll be a lot cheaper and a lot easier to begin gathering data in real time, in present time, and, and do it over a long enough period of time. And by easier, I mean, it'll still be really fucking hard, like so expensive and so hard to do and make sure it's uniform and give all the instructions to all the various bodies and such like that. It would be really, really, really hard. Or do you at least kind of reach out and see whether there's enough people who are mad scared who have enough experiences that you're like okay let's let's see if there's an alternative out there but the bias that we have against change and you know you heard it when Ernst was was chatting on Wednesday and, and this is very much part of you know his sort of approach and I have a lot of respect for Ernst a ton but when we say that we shouldn't change things just for the sake of change. This isn't just for the sake of change. Do we have hard evidence that it needs to change? No. Is it, is there a good potential that a change, some kind of change, a better change would achieve the goal of making this game more safe? Um, yeah, not this. This won't make it any safer or more dangerous. It's just not going to be, you know, it's just not going to work as a actual reward for an unintentional foul committed by a defender in the circle that stops play and stops players from doing cool shit like scoring goals, right? It's just not going to work. So how do we find an alternative? I, I presented a couple that I thought were going to be pretty good, so... You're not gigging tonight, but not at home. Ah, you saw the Discord post. Well, who knows? Maybe it'll pop up for people, maybe it won't. I think that's probably good. Unless you guys want to raise anything else at me, I will sit here. Mike, do you want to make more fun of my glasses? 
I didn't have a migraine yesterday. But I did fall asleep. Like, literally at my computer. Just kind of went... Because I was listening to myself. Going through the transcript. Going, wow, I'm boring. And I missed a meeting. Because I was asleep. It's really exhausting doing these things. You have no idea. I think hard and use up all my glucose. And, and then I'm tired. But I... I don't know, the glasses might work. I'm gonna have to gather data. But we're doing an experiment. Let the clubs decide, says Mike McCartney. Clubs post videos of their potential alternative PCs and whichever ones go properly by will get shortlisted. We have national polls by any to see what's more popular. Sure. Well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm digging up old footage and showing it off and pushing it on people and convincing them because I'm trying to sway public opinion. Not because I want my alternative to win. I just want the best alternative to win. And I think this is it. <laughs> I wasn't wearing the glasses at the time, but okay, it's 80s disco induced napping. But maybe that's another positive to this approach is that it's hard to get people to respond to surveys. It's hard to get input. It's hard to overcome the inertia of wanting to keep everything the same. So by putting this very, very gently worded and deployed trial out into the wild, are they in fact inspiring provoking, pushing, poking the bear, people to get off their asses and put some thought into this instead of saying, all right, like we, we know the FH is going to do something, so we better try to influence it and make sure it's good. We better get off our asses and try some new things and to gather some data and to put it out there. And if that is part of their conscious strategy, that's smart too even if they're not telling anybody about it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you bonus points for that. John, bonus points. If you, if you had that in your mind. If you didn't, take credit for it anyway. Who knows? Okay, I'm gonna let y'all go. It is coming up to, it is coming up to 8.30 in the UK. Don is just getting his night started. Oh, Stefan's here. I didn't know you were here, Stefan. I would have said hi earlier. Uh, question. <laughs> See, just as I was about to wrap up. Uh, if the data between the two options so sh shows similar results, uh, i.e. goal conversion and safety, uh, are the same, will the status quo remain? I don't know. I don't know. I think, as I said before, that they can't keep going like this. You wouldn't you wouldn't throw this trial out there without having any full statistics to motivate you. Without being really motivated to want to change the rules. They are motivated to change the rules. And not because they're assholes, but because they don't want anybody to die. Like I'm, the, the more I think about it, the more I'm actually empathizing with the organizational perspective here. And I guess it's the lawyer and coming out that I think, yeah, we've been, we've been lucky. We've been very lucky, and maybe that luck will continue to hold, but maybe it won't. And frankly, there's a lot of other reasons, a lot of other existential threats to our sport that are a lot more significant that we don't have a freaking chance of, of solving. Climate. Okay, so they're working on the turf. They're working on water-based and making it water less or waterless. But the, the, the way that climate change is making it harder and harder for us to play our sport outside all sports to be played outside that's the biggest threat to our sport that you can possibly have because 
if it's not extremely hot, it's extremely cold and blizzarding, there's tornadoes, there's hurricanes, there's typhoons, there's torrential rain. There's so many, there, there's wildfire smoke. There are so many things happening now that make it impossible for us to play outside. And it's just going to get worse at an exponential rate over the next decades. So if you're looking at about, okay, what do we really need to change to help our sport survive? I mean, I was kind of gassing around in, on Wednesday about how our planet's going to blow up in 10, 30 years. But I'm kind of not, because I am quite convinced as a certified middle-aged person who is not leaving behind any offspring of my own, that I'm kind of glad that I'm going to be ducking out in hopefully 40, 45, maybe even 50 years. But I don't even know if the planet's going to last that long. That's how bad it is, you guys. Like how, how are we going to continue to play all of our sports outside? And who's going to be able to continue to play? Football, cricket, American football, ice hockey, baseball, maybe tennis. Sports with money. And we are not that sport. Lack of facilities, lack of land, lack of building, construction, like... It's gonna, it's gonna get us. It's absolutely gonna get us. So if you think that this is the worst thing and that nothing should change in our sport, well, you're not paying attention to the fact that there's gonna be a lot of change coming out. So there you go. You're welcome. Shrikanth, it was really nice to see you and I hope we see you more often on Wednesdays. And if you haven't joined the server, Shrikanth, come into our server here. What? This is this link is just for you. Nobody else gets to use this, okay? I know it'll look generic, but this is targeted just for you. Oh, last thing. Mumbai had Hendrix too. So the strategy call. You're not gonna convince me today. I'll think about it. I'll think about it, okay? And and in Norway it's 9:30? Okay. Alright. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know which part you got into all of that stuff. So Rich, I was watching Luria and she talked about this as a discoverable that this will be on the shorts feed for people who get live shorts. And so maybe somebody will... So I was like, ah, I'll put my lashes on and see what happens. And I wanted to rant and stuff. Uh, Tom, does, uh, does it lead to a lower goal conversion but more safety during the corner if it does lead to more con goal conversion but more safety do i think defenders will defend with less caution and safety is the chance of a goal is lower i think the mo the the reason the defenders can behave more riskily is when they have more protective equipment so i don't think they're gonna have less to worry about under this rules trial because there won't be drag flicks. If anybody doesn't understand that this is the end of the drag flick, you ain't listening. <laughs> you, you haven't thought about it very carefully. You're not listening to Gonzalo Payat on Twitter because he mad. He mad because that's his, that's his livelihood right there. Being attacked. So, and think about the thousands of hours that other players have put in Think about the juniors right now who haven't been training their passing skills to the same extent that they've been training drag flicks. Think of all the hours that they could could have been putting into that, but they've been putting into drag flicks. And then by the time that they get to top flight competition, it doesn't exist anymore. That's why I think drag flicks are dumb. Oh! Not all the comments you typed on your phone or PC came through in the chat. You don't know why, and it could be your equipment. Huh. Interesting. I don't know if I can go back and see, because I, I, I've been putting up every comment that you've made, Scott, because, you know, you're a bit of a big deal. You're an OG. And so, yeah. 
I'll um I might follow up with uh Rich. Rich, you and I will follow up with Renee Ritchie on this. Stefan, with working in health and safety, you're happy at least they're looking at the potential issue and trying to understand if there is the issue if there is one. You're not fooled by randomness. Yep, that's fair. I'm not really into health and safety, but I'm sure into the law. <laughs> so that's probably like that. No, I I just decided to try this. I don't like Instagram. You know. Oh, during open play. Ah, oh, I understand. Do I think that that if it's a lower goal conversion rate that defenders will be more reckless, i.e. not wanting to play within the rules because they're more willing to give up a penalty corner because this penalty corner is going to be a terrible option? Yes. As a defender, that's exactly what I would, I would do. I'd be like, oops, hit my foot, oops. I would really be trying less hard. Because I'd be like, oh, penalty corner is okay. I wouldn't be intentionally breaking down play because I don't want to give up strokes, but. Right? I know, like, do they need to call it a medium? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna do with this. Have I been going for an hour? God, Rich. When will I ever shut up? Oh, hi, Bentley. Oh, I'm sorry, Bentley, I'm sorry to hear you're not feeling well. That sucks. That sucks. You get better fast. Um, yeah, we do need evidence. Anyway, yeah, it would be nice to see coaches get more creative. Absolutely. Don, of course you drag flick. And sometimes you have to defend against one. You can confirm they are scary. Yeah, I, I, th th we don't, I've not played with drag flickers. But I also, with this, I, I don't think I've defended more than a few, like a handful of penalty corners for the last like 10 years. Because I'm like, I'm sorry, but this face, livelihood. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm not interested in getting hurt and I don't have the courage that I used to. Um, I did defend a corner in indoor because you have to in indoor. Everybody, well, you don't have to, but you're much more likely to be involved in indoor. And I managed to make a stop on a shot. I mean, if you want terror, defend corners in indoor because they're all drag flicks, <laughs> basically. So let's know there. Oh no, you're not a distraction. I'm just, honestly, I'm just screwing around here. I'm just amazed that anybody's there. But this is the sign. When you get the toodle pip from the Mike McCartney, you know that it's about time to go. And yeah, everybody's everybody's ready. I appreciate that. Tell James Brown to wrap it up. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. And I hope this was interesting. I'm gonna try some things going forward in the server, on the YouTubes, behind the scenes stuff because why not? But I had fun and let's go see if I get a migraine now. Let's find out. Uh, let's see, how, I don't even know how to end this, but thanks for coming. We'll see you in the server. We'll see you next week on What Up Wednesday. Bring me your scenarios and have a great hockey weekend. Bye everybody.